Hello. In this video we're going to look at a way of using the Zikoi balance and weight meter with its angle sensors to get well matched neutrals and travels on the control surfaces on your model aircraft. In particular with reference to elevators, flaps and elevons where any slight mismatch could result in getting a roll when you move the elevators or put the flaps down. As an option with the Zikoi CG meter, you can buy the angle sensors. They come with a pack of three, although I only ever used two at any one time together, as I say, to match the surfaces on the left and right of the aircraft. What we'll look at is how to set it up in order to make sure the two surfaces have exactly the same neutrals, and then how to more easily use it to check that the travels are, first of all, the travel that you want, as per the instructions, and that the two sides are indeed matched. First of all, you need to select your model, and I'm not going to teach you how to select and set them up, um, because that's a separate thing. But having created the name of the model, at the very least, set as tricycle, select Angles. Now, here you can choose to set the travel values in degrees, if you press that, or set them in millimetres. And since most instructions go by millimetres, that's what we'll leave it as. What you would do is, we're going to uh, do the elevator here, so you press edit, then you can tap on a value and set it. If there's a number in there that you don't like, press the delete to get rid of the number. And then, whoops, put in the number that you want. In here, do the same thing. Tap on the value, put in the value you want. And when you're done, save. The important thing here, where it says for width, is the distance from the hinge line to the trailing edge and do it at the largest part of the cord which was typically near the root uh, or certainly the part of the cord where the instructions tell you that they want a particular travel value and normally that's the largest cord near the root because what the machine will do is using that cord it can work out from the angles what the actual travel value is. Save that. Now we can come out of here, go to angle, and we'll have a look at what the angle sensors are telling us. This is the one plugged into left. As you can see, as I move it up and down, it's showing a weird value because it's upside down. That's the normal way up. So that's the way we would put it on the upright model. You can see it's now showing, pointing down, pointing up. This is the up end. So what we need to do is, from here, choose which of the surfaces you're going to measure. Because obviously if you've put in data for the uh, ailerons, and you're wanting to measure the ailerons, there's no point in having the elevator here because it will tell you the data for the elevator. So select your correct surface. Get your two angle sensors. And what we need to do first of all is make sure the two angle sensors are saying exactly the same thing. So we want to set their reference. Now I've brought my two angle sensors here to the edge of the table and I'm holding them down hard at the edge which I have sanded to make sure is absolutely flat. Normally I would do this on the ground steel table of my pillar drill or bandsaw because it really is a flat surface but this bit of the bench is okay. The point is we want the two of them to be at exactly the same level well, not level but angle as each other. And You can see by looking at the screen it thinks they're at different angles so we need to set them both to be the same. So we go into reference and we're going to select ground relative 
We're not going to tell them that the angle they're at is absolutely ground, in other words, absolutely horizontal. We're not using a reference sensor. We're just going to say, whatever angle they're at, we'll call it ground, i.e. level. So set zero, and there you are. You can see both sensors are saying the same thing now. And that's what's important. So that when we put it on the model, if they say that both sides are the same angle, they don't have to be zero, just the same angle, we'll know that the surfaces are at the same angle themselves. So let's attach them to the model. Here I have attached the angle sensor to the left elevator and it's connected into the left socket of the display unit. I've attached it using low tack masking tape so that I don't damage the surface when I lift the tape off. But it is very important that it is firmly attached and that cannot wiggle up and down in response to being pulled by the cable or changes in angles. As it says on the sensor, set the hinge line parallel to this line at the bottom. And so that line there under the tape is parallel to the hinge line, not to the trailing edge. Now, although we're trying to measure the travel at the deepest part of the cord, which is here, because that's where instructions generally give it, it does not matter where on the surface you actually mount the sensor, because it measures changes in angles, not distance. And because we've told the display unit this cord line here, then from that and the change in angle it gets from the sensor, it's very simple trigonometry for it to work out how far this point has travelled up and down. What does matter, though, is that the sensor that we fit to the other side is mounted at an equal distance and not somewhere else at random. And the reason being that the slope on here can vary. Obviously, if it's the same depth from end to end, but a different cord, then this slope here must be steeper than that one. On the other hand, the depth of the spar here is going to taper, which would make that a more shallow one. Now, it's highly unlikely that the two effects will cancel each other out perfectly, with the result that the slope is likely to vary along the span. And since the first job we want to do is set both surfaces to exactly the same angle, then we, in other words, the same slopes, we need both sensors on each side to be at the same point of the surface so that they're measuring the same slope on the surface and that will allow us to get them both zeroed. After that, when you're actually measuring the uh, travel values, it doesn't matter because there you're just measuring a change in angle as it moves. But to get them both zeroed, you see it's important that on both sides they are at the same distance. Now, with the sensors in place and the model is switched on, we can see the angle at the left and the right elevators. Remember, this doesn't necessarily mean that they're down, because even if the model is perfectly level, because uh, surfaces are tapered, the top surface should be pointing slightly downwards, the bottom surface be pointing slightly upwards. We're not interested in that. All we're interested in is the fact that they are different. Remember, we've just reset them by reference to be the same as each other. So the fact they're now showing a difference means they must be at different angles. And what we can do here is, ideally, make mechanical adjustments to the push rods so that both come the same by turning the, the clevis in or out. Uh, or you might want to use the sub-trim. Uh, for ease of speed on this, I'll just use the sub-trim on the transmitter to adjust the neutral point of the left elevator. So you can see what happens as we move the sub-trim. Getting even further away. On the other hand, if I wind it the other direction, I can get the two numbers to match now. So now I'm happy that my left and right elevators are at the same angle doesn't mean, of course, they're at the correct angle for the model. What you would do is, mechanically or sub-trim, one of them 
to the reference point that the instructions say is the neutral, or you just eyeball it to neutral, and then set the other one to match. Now that we've done that, we want to check the travels. But obviously we're offset at the moment. So this is where we use the reference again. Go back to reference and now ground relative again. What that will do is teach the system that whatever they're at at the moment is zero. So now they're both saying zero. And if I move the control stick they go up, and I move the control stick forward, they go down. The blue lines here represent the travel value that we had set in the screen earlier. If we're within the travel value, the line will be yellow. When we reach the travel value that was set, the line will turn green, and if we go beyond it, the line will turn red. So now let's start by testing up elevator. As you can see, this one's going into the red, so it's traveling a bit too far. You can see the value in angle is a bit higher than that one, which is green. So I want to adjust the value of this to make it green. So in the transmitter, travel values, I can adjust that down until it's nice and firm green. There we are. They're both pretty much at the same angle, they're certainly green, we're fine there. Let's try the going downwards. Well that one's green, that's good, but this one is yellow, it's just about flicking green, which means it hasn't quite got enough travel value. So if we give it a little bit more travel value in the transmitter, there we are. Both greens down, both greens up, and that's it. So the first operation ensured that both surfaces were at the same angle. And then, having got those two the same, we used the reference set to zero again, so that we could then set the travels. And that's how easy it is.